What would you do if you were walking in a field at night when you saw someone approached and they looked just like you, except something was wrong? And then your flashlight flickers off and you hear him start to move towards you. This is the subject of tonight's story. This creepypasta is called My Beer Run Took Me to Hell and Something Followed Me Back. The other night, I was at a house party when disaster struck. We had run out of beer. I was seemingly the soberest out of my group of friends, who had all devolved into shirtless maniacs doing their best WWE impressions as they jumped off tables into one another. And so it was decided that I was going to be the one to go on the holy crusade that is the beer run. We're all in our early 20s, and the two 24 packs of beer we had just bought a few hours earlier had all been thrown up or pissed out. Did we need more beer? No. Did we want it? Heck yeah. I was still a little wobbly and knew that driving was out of the question. Although I probably could have managed it, even my drunk brain knew that wasn't a good idea. My friend's house was in a quiet forested area just outside of the town where I lived. And the only way back was the road or shortcut by trail. The road was a safer option as there were less chances I would run into a bear or something. But the night was dragging on and the liquor store would soon close, so I had to hurry up. I knew taking the trail would shave a good 20 minutes off, so I grabbed my flashlight and my jacket and headed out the door down the old dirt trail. The pleasant warm breeze that had accompanied me as I left the house vanished and the temperature started dropping a few degrees as I strolled down the path. It was like stepping out of summer and into fall in real time. I was glad to have my jacket wrapped around me tightly like a reassuring hug. The gigantic trees loomed into each other at the tops, creating a canopy of darkness over the path with only a pinpoint of light I could see that was the far side of the town. I could feel my buzz wearing off as I walked, and emotions like fear began creeping into my consciousness. It was almost pitch black now, I flipped on my flashlight and began thinking about bears or anything else that could go bump into the night out here. And at the exact same time, I saw another flashlight flicker to life somewhere down the trail. It was kind of weird, I thought. Because there were all the reasons to head into town. But heading out this way? There were only a couple other houses by my friends. And they seemed to be inhabited by retirees with lawn ornament obsessions. I doubted they had the youthful energy to be running around a trail in the middle of the night. Nevertheless, I continued walking, with only the sounds of my footsteps and blood in my ears to keep me company with my new acquaintance. I could make out a silhouette of the stranger now. He appeared to be my height, but my flashlight wasn't the strongest, and there wasn't much for the weak beam of light to bounce off of in the darkness. Me and the stranger probably had 30 or so feet between us now, and we were both walking in the middle of the path. I stepped right to make room for the man. He stepped right too. I could feel my heart rate picking up as we got closer and closer. I stepped left, and the stranger did too. Closer and closer. I stepped right again, and the man mimicked me without pause. Then I stopped. There was maybe 12 feet between us now, I took a step back, and so did the man. I shined my flashlight at his feet. He, however, didn't copy me. I noticed we were wearing the same Adidas sneakers. I started to slowly raise my flashlight and realized we were wearing the exact same outfit. But he was filthy, like he had been buried for a few days and dug up. With a shaking hand, I slowly raised my flashlight to his face and kind of blanked out. I had never felt fear so cold and blunt. It was like somebody had ran a bath filled with every nightmare I ever had in my life and held my head under the water. I was staring back at myself, my face, even the little scar on my chin I had gotten from falling into my parents' coffee table as a kid was there. But this wasn't me, it couldn't be me. There were thin purple veins all over his face pulsating in waves like tiny troops of ants were making their rounds under his skin. 
His grinning mouth was just a little too big and held just a few teeth too many. It seemed like there was another set hiding behind the original, like shark. But the worst part were his eyes, or maybe lack thereof. There were cold, vanta black tar pits where my light blue irises should have been. I was lost for a moment, just staring into those lifeless voids when I heard a click and my flashlight shut off. His was still on. I could still see his feet firmly on the ground, waiting like we were in a game of chess and it was my move. Slowly, he began to turn the flashlight up towards his chin like one does when telling a story around a campfire. And then he clicked it off. Silence filled the air. I very slowly began to turn around when suddenly it shrieked and I heard it lunging towards me. I screamed back and I began to sprint as fast as I could down the trail back towards my friend's house in the dark. At one point I tripped, twisted my ankle pretty bad, but I caught myself mid-fall. The adrenaline masked the pain just enough to keep going. I didn't stop running, nor did I look back until I got inside my friend's house. I was in hysterics and crying. My friends turned the music off and gathered around to ask me what happened. However, their concern quickly turned into laughter and ridicule when I told them what I saw in the woods. Who shared a joint with this guy earlier? He clearly can't handle his weed, one of my friends said as the room erupted in a fitful of laughter. They all thought I was kidding or crazy, but I know what I saw. I don't know what it was, but I know what happened was real. I've been losing sleep over this. And last night I woke up and could feel something nagging at me to look out my apartment window. And when I did, I could have sworn I saw myself at a bus stop, a couple of blocks away, staring back. And that is our story for this evening. If you have enjoyed this story, don't forget to like and subscribe.